Welcome back as we explain two methods of measuring the phase difference between two signals of the same frequency. Let's work through the measurement procedure using this simple resistor and capacitor circuit. Note that we only make one probe earth connection to the circuit. We'll explain the reason for this later. Set the channel 1 input coupling switch to ground. Move the channel 2 trace off the screen. Using the vertical position control, superimpose the trace on the horizontal center graticule line. Switch the coupling switch to AC and adjust the peak to peak amplitude of the signal to span exactly six vertical divisions using the volts per division control as well as the variable volts per division control. Position the start of a cycle on a suitable vertical graticule line as shown. Using the time per division control, together with the variable control, adjust the period of the signal to span exactly 7,2 horizontal divisions. This sets up channel 1 as the reference trace. Note that one cycle of a waveform represents a 360 degree period and 7,2 divisions equals one period or 360 degrees. It follows that each division then represents 50 degrees and each subdivision is equal to 10 degrees. Bring the channel 2 signal back onto the screen and using the volts per division, the variable volts per division and the vertical position controls set the peak to peak amplitude to span exactly six vertical divisions. Now measure the horizontal distance separating the two signals using the graduations on the horizontal center line as an accurate measuring scale. This distance represents the phase shift between the two signals. The calculation is as follows. Eight subdivisions times 10 degrees per subdivision equals a phase shift of 80 degrees. In conclusion, channel 1 leads channel 2 by 80 degrees or the voltage across the resistor leads the voltage across the capacitor by 80 degrees. Another method of measuring the shift between two sinusoidal signals is called the Lissajous pattern method. The scope setup is almost identical to the setup described in the previous sequence with the exception that the horizontal time base is switched to the XY mode by turning the time per division control fully clockwise. A trace appears on the screen whose shape is dependent on the phase relationship between the two signals applied to the scope. To measure the phase shift, set the channel 1 input coupling switch to ground and adjust the vertical trace to span exactly six divisions, three above and three below the horizontal center line. Then set the channel 2 input coupling switch to ground and adjust the spot to dead center. Set both input coupling switches to AC and the pattern should return to the screen. Measure the number of vertical divisions and subdivisions enclosed by the circle. This is dimension A. Dimension B has a value of 6 since it was preset to this value. To calculate the phase shift, the formula is Phase shift equals sine to the minus 1 A over B. Or we may say the phase shift between the two signals is described by the angle whose sine is equal to the ratio of A over B. After completing the measurements, always switch the time per division control away from the XY setting to prevent the spot from burning the screen. The measurement procedure just described may seem confusing, so let's briefly explain what occurs during XY operation. Normally, the horizontal time base is free running. However, when the XY setting is chosen, the time base stops and the horizontal trace becomes a spot. Channel 1 now becomes the X deflection input and channel 2 remains as the Y deflection input. 
applying two sine wave signals of identical frequency to both input channels causes the beam to trace out a diagonal line at exactly 45 degrees, which indicates that the two signals are exactly in phase. By switching channel 2 to the invert position, we observe that the pattern changes to a diagonal in exactly the opposite direction, indicating that the two signals are now 180 degrees out of phase or exactly opposite one another. This completes the measurement section of the program. We suggest that you take time out to practice the setup and measurement techniques that you have learnt.